So hi, hi everyone. Yeah, uh, maybe let's start. Yeah. So hello, I'm Liang Xiaoxing uh, from IND Center, US Lab, and supporting chair of support as committee member. Uh, today we invited uh, uh, Mr. Kengo Yoshisan to give us a presentation about uh, a social entrepreneur. Today's presentation is a feature lecture of uh, uh, Cherry Support 2021 events. So if you can't hear our voice, please, please check your uh, speak volume. If that does not work, please try to reopen your uh, browser. You may also watch the presentation in YouTube Live. During the presentation, you can use chat box and send stamp to share your reaction actively. Before starting the lecture, let me quickly introduce our Cherry Support activities and share some information. Cherry Support is an annual Sony internal bottom-up activity initiated by INE Center volunteer and launched back in 2017. This event provides a platform and opportunity for all INE members to propose and promote their ideas for potential future research projects, which includes open discussion and collaboration across all R&D labs. The event uh, culminates in an innovation contest where the best ideas will be awarded and get the chance to be actually implemented as research projects. Cherry support stands for challenge and support, but meaning comes from Japanese, which is encourage everyone to try new things and encourage everyone to help each other for the child. This year, we also have Cherry support activity we opened the website in June, started an uh, entry about the exhibitor in July, and now we are preparing the main event in September. Until now, uh, Cherry Support 2021 has organized several uh, featured articles, lectures, and the interviews, which can inspire you, in including the presentation today. Please check them out if you are interested. Now we are preparing the uh, main events. In main event week, starting from September 6, visitors can browse the idea pitches, give comments, and vote for them. At live day on September 14th, throughout the day, there will be poster presentation of all topics. Visitors can watch them and uh, interact with presenters. Live day event starts with opening ceremony and a guest speech, and ends up with closing ceremony. If you are interested, in, please check the schedule of online week and live day and add them in your calendar. If you have any question about Cherry Support, please contact us through email after today's, event, uh, today's presentation. Okay, uh, let's go back to our presentation today. The presenter today is my colleague Yushisan. Uh, Yushisan is a research engineer at Sony IND US uh, San Jose Lab. Uh, Yushisan likes helping people, especially in a vulnerable situation. So he worked as a volunteer at Youth Homeless Shelter. He is a creator of Okro, a, re a resource sharing platform for underprivileged youth to connect them to uh, opportunities and social supports. I'm very looking forward to hear his story about Okro. So Yushisan, could you please start your lecture? Yeah. <clears throat> uh <clears throat> Thank you very much for your kind introduction, Yuan Xiao. I'm super excited to be here today for this great opportunity. Yeah, so I really like this kind of bottom-up activities like challenge support, challenge support, as I believe in the power of individuals for positive changes. <clears throat> you know, uh, here I'm located in San Francisco Bay Area and the Silicon Valley, which is the place for uh, entrepreneurship and the ecosystem of the launching the startup companies. So it's all about the uh, uh, bottom up approach. <clears throat> you know, every startup company starts from an individual who has a, like a strong will to change the world. And there is an ecosystem to support such individual challengers until uh, they succeed. Then the successful individuals now support the new challenger of individuals. So this is the ecosystem of positive changes. So I believe you know these cycles of positive changes can be uh, created inside an organization in the same manner. So I truly believe that challenge support team. Thank you so much for this opportunity today. So let me uh, share my screen. Okay. <clears throat> Right. So
So, uh, let me guess. Let me get started by introducing myself. I uh, started my career as a software engineer, and I worked for the uh, Smart TV Development Division, which is a very large business in unit in Sony. That was in from 2007. You know, uh, while I got a skill, like as an engineer there, I started to think about what I really want to do in my career and in my life and what really motivates me. I didn't have a clear answer at the time myself, but one thing I had in my mind always is I want to create a new product which does not exist now and which people never seen before. So I decided to change my environment in 2015 to somewhere that inspires my curiosity. That is the uh, Sony R&D Center. And Sony R&D Center develops concept prototypes leveraging emerging technologies. So I was fortunate to join the uh, project member of uh, Future Experience Program and Concept N. So a bit about Concept N, you see uh, this uh, neckband style device. So this is a concept prototype. It's a cool device that you can wear easily and you can enjoy the new music experience without covering your ears. And it has a mic you can talk to. It has an assistant that assists your daily life by reading your schedule or by like a reading email. And you can take a picture at the moment. So it's really make you uh, freedom while you enjoy the uh, moment of your every moment of your life. So that was the concept the concept and, and I really like. And that was the open innovation platform. And I had the opportunity to uh, lead the open uh, innovation program in San Francisco Bay Area uh, by collaborating the, uh, the more than 300 test users. Then I created a community and that through the direct communication co-creation process, I uh, led the um, development of the service development of the uh, prototype. So that was really an exciting project and I really enjoyed it. <clears throat> but at the same time, I was asking myself, oh, this is a very cool experience, but what problems are we really solving? So that was the always uh, asking myself to answer that. And the project ends and I was fortunate to have a new uh, opportunities to create a new concept uh, project. So in the new concept project, what I really focused on was a problem driven approach. So I tried to shift from the technology mindset to uh, more like a people a problem driven approach. So I try to identify the problems, what we want to solve, rather than creating like a cool idea using technology. So I joined like a local communities, uh, meetups, uh, conferences, and startup pitch events, and talk to different many people, listen to their needs from different perspectives. And you know, living in the San Francisco Bay Area also changed my mind to think about uh, what kind of future I want to create. You know, San Francisco is a very uh, innovative city. Uh, lots of new ideas testing out like uh, uh, autonomous car, robotics, uh, personal mobility devices, and so on. And lots of startup, great diversity. I really love the city. But uh, when I talk to local people, like uh, local communities, I learned lots of social problems like uh, housing crisis or gen gentrification, income gap or uh, education gap or healthcare, aging in place, and what is homeless or like a garbage problem and wildfire in California is big. And people really need a solution for such social problems. And there's a little technology-based solution for those unmet needs. So, you know, this is a huge gap before I come to San Francisco and after I, you know, stayed for like a couple of years in San Francisco working for an innovative project. 
And this turned me, I want to challenge solving a social problem. So this is the introduction about me, how I started the journey of becoming a social entrepreneur. So uh, today's uh, contents, so these uh, are the table of contents. What is social entrepreneur? And I want to show five stages of entrepreneurship. And I want to uh, show some of the case studies, my projects. And also what the final message is, uh, Everyone can become a social entrepreneur. So that's the uh, message. I hope this session, in the end of the session, uh, I can deliver some meaningful uh, message to you. So uh, what is social entrepreneur? <laughs> so, uh, you know, there are some similar terms like an entrepreneur, uh, inventor, innovator, entrepreneur, and social. What's the difference between social and not? So here's uh, the definition. Inventor is a person who creates a social idea. And innovator is an inventor plus solving problem. And entrepreneur is innovator plus makes money. And social entrepreneur is entrepreneur who solves the social problem. And that's for the entrepreneur uh, related terms definitions. And entrepreneur is a person who behaves like an entrepreneur with a large organization, like my company. And social entrepreneur is an entrepreneur who solves the social problem. So this is a, a definition. I hope it makes sense to you. So uh, why I want to deliver a social entrepreneur as a message is. So, you know, the, there are three points. One, addressing social problems will be more and more important in the future, not just the pursuit of profits. So as you may know, the, uh, the United Nations set up a sustainable development goals, SDGs, designed to be uh, like a blueprint to achieve a better and more sustainable future for all. So this is all of our responsibility as a human being. And as an employee, uh, employee uh, um, as an employee in a large company, the corporate social responsibility comes from each individual responsibilities. So as I mentioned in the very beginning, new, challenge, new changes always start from individuals. So that's the first point. And second, uh, no matter how the times change, or no matter how AI replaces workforces, the skill sets that you will require as a social entrepreneur will always live on. So entrepreneur, uh, not only entrepreneur, 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 same, uh, requires wide range of skill sets from uh, leadership skill, or like a visioning skill, user research skill to understand your customer, creativity skill and prototyping skill and user test skill and creating the business model skill, negotiation skill and so on. So these are the most universe, universal portable skill. And the third one is social entrepreneurship mind for every employer will embrace positive changes inside your team, organization, and your society. Yeah, I am envisioning the future like a, every individual is a social entrepreneur at any age, wherever you are, or wherever organization you belong to. Yeah, so these are the three important messages I want to deliver today. You know, sometimes uh, people ask uh, <clears throat> entrepreneur in a large company versus like an entrepreneur in a startup. I'm not saying which is good or bad, but uh, my two cents is, you know, uh, why entrepreneurs may be better suited to like a cutting edge fields where speed and revenue is essential. I believe uh, entrepreneur may be better suited to creating a business model by solving a social problem. 
which requires a variety of like uh, uh, stakeholder uh, involvement, and it takes long-term strategy. That's one thing. And also, I think uh, there's certainly big benefits of entrepreneur, entrepreneur in a large company. You can get uh, like a tre tremendous support in many aspects. You may be able to find talents or your co-founder easily, or you can find a designer, or you can find an engineer or you know, marketer that supports you or work with you. And you can get support from lawyer and like quality assurance, uh, security specialists, like uh, privacy concerns. So those are the benefits of, as an entrepreneur because the, there are lots of resources in the organization already. And entrepreneurs need to find these like uh, talent or resources themselves somewhere but entrepreneur can leverage company resources. All right, so uh, move on to the stages of, stages of entrepreneur. So there are five uh, big stages as an entrepreneur. One, concept stage to build your vision and hypothesis. And two, MVP, minimum viable product phase to validate your hypothesis with your customers. And third stage is called the seed. It's a sell your product to your first customer and find a growth driver. If you are able to find a growth driver, it's, this is a significant achievement, I believe, in this third, third stage. Because you find the growth driver here, that means, as a fact, that means uh, you can just uh, invest your resources or budget to the growth driver to scale your uh, business. Then uh, exit. Maybe uh, business existing business take in the organization will take over, or uh, spin off, or maybe joint venture on lots of opportunities. That's equity plan. So uh, let's look up into a little bit into uh, the first stage. It's uh, about concept. So this is very beginning of the journey. So build your vision and share it with your potential customers. Build your small team here, maybe two or three, not too many, more than four. I do not recommend more than, more than four to keep the speed uh, decision making. And the important thing is define your hypothesis. Who is the customers? What is the problem? Why can the customers solve it? And how does your idea solve the problem? And do the customers pay for your product? And how do you, how do you validate your hypothesis? You know, uh, it sounds like a easy, but it's not easy. <laughs> the most important point I want to say is uh, talking to customers in this concept phase before you invest your time for building something like prototyping. Uh, so in my uh, past experiences, I had a cool idea, which I strongly believed, and I protect by spending a couple months. And then I looked for a customer to try my actual prototype. But I found out it is not something that customers want. And I need to pivot my idea. It was a huge time loss. So uh, I will strongly recommend. So in this first concept state, it is essential to find a, at least a few customers who are really excited about your idea and promised to buy your prototype if you actually develop it. So it's like a uh, kind of cloud fundraising in a small scale, but it's very important to have uh, already relationship with customers who can't wait for your product coming up. So that will keep you motivated throughout the all stages. Yeah, and I would not recommend to spend your many days to build a prototype without talking to customers. In other words, the uh, most of your time in this stage should be spent to find a few customers and build a relationship with them. And you can show your like a very uh, rough paper prototype in the 
in this space. This is, yeah, I'm telling myself about this too. So this is such an important. Uh, so if you have all of these answers in a written pitch format that you can convince your uh, supporters, then uh, stage one is completed. You can move on to the stage two. So stage two is, as you already know, you, you already have hypothesis and you already know how to validate that. So you can just validate your hypothesis to your uh, customers with your prototype. So it's a time to, uh, it's, new, it's time to take a little time to prototyping. I would say uh, it's not easy. So <laughs> uh, the first prototype will always for me, it fails. So we need to pivot and pivot and pivot until your customer uh, will be satisfied <laughs> about your product. So many pivot cycle. So how fast you can run this cycle is very important for this stage. And if your customer says they will pay for your prototype, then uh, it's time to create a business plan. Okay, after you valued your MVP, it's now the time to sell your product to your first customers. So if, even if the prototype, the, your first customer is waiting for that, so just uh, uh, sell your product here. And uh, find the growth driver to scale your customer. This is the key activity uh, to move on to the next stage for scale. But we, you only have the first customer, so uh, you need you have a business plan to scale your business and there are like a revenue projections how many number of users how many number of customers how what's the um, business model what's the pricing option and what's the uh you know uh, schedule or your turn your project make a profit so what's the uh, traction point to to drive your uh revenue projection so that's a growth driver. Okay, so I, to be honest, I'm not in the stage of the <laughs> uh, four scale exit. So, but I think these one, two, three is a very important I want to share through my uh, experiences. Okay, let me uh, show my products here, what I'm doing here in the San Francisco Bay Area. So I launched uh, two beta services. One is called Opera, and another one is called the Presence Talk. And Opera is for uh, educational organization. It's a B2B uh, business uh, product. And Presence Talk is for uh, high schoolers and their parents. Uh, it's a customer, and we help them to match uh, with uh, real college students to get a uh, mentoring session to explore uh, college uh, opportunities. So mainly today I'm going to explain about the opera because this is uh, addressing the social uh, problem in the San Francisco Bay Area and also in the uh, uh, nationwide in the States. So this is for uh, educational organization public education organization, but uh, their target problems what we are trying to solve is about the, it's called the opportunity use. It's a new term maybe for you, but opportunity use is defined as a age 16 to 24 uh, years old in the US who are not currently enrolled in school or employed. So, oh, okay. So this is the definition of the uh, disconnect. Sometimes we say disconnected use. So the number of fact is 12.5% of 16 to 24 years old in the US are the opportunity use. So these uh, opportunity use represent the wealth of untapped potential but has been facing the most immense challenges in all respects. And this is this number is before 
the uh, COVID. So in after the COVID, it, the number is more. So based on the uh, measure of America, it's a report. Uh, the number of opportunity used in the United States could essentially double, starting from uh, 4.4 million to nearly 9 million. And the average disconnected use cost is about $37,450 a year in government services. So uh, these are the target uh, problem what we are trying to solve. <clears throat> Okay, so uh, honestly, I didn't know about this problem before I, I talked to uh, potential customers in the educational organization in the States. I even didn't know the problem exists here. So uh, that's embarrassing, but the concept phase is always starting from customers. So talking to customer that gives you a hint of what really motivates you and what's the target problem that you really uh, want to solve. So that's the, uh, we, I made a small team in the created uh, concept stage and created a concept to empower like a uh, <clears throat> community to so civic engagement. That was the very starting point before uh, talking to educational organization. I was really passionate about the people standing up in the States and protest for positive changes. That motivates me, oh, I can do that too. So civic engagement would be the big uh, key. And we want to support such movement through the technologies. And that was the concept of Community Hub, very beginning. But uh, when we talk to different people, like uh, uh, government, local government people, nonprofit people, even like a startup in the local communities, so <clears throat> we pitched this concept to like a cities, NPOs in the San Francisco area, and you know most of the cases they listen to it, they understand what we are saying, but it's not the uh, match between their priority of the needs and our uh, ideas. So somehow we need to pivot our solutions to fit the most important priority for their needs. So we pivoted many times and maybe countless communication with customers and, and in the total, now I have launched the beta service, but I think it's more at least seven times the feedback loops we people did the solutions. So uh, this is like a little bit uh, stakeholder mapping that may uh, help you understand the uh, stakeholders, what my project is trying to solve. So in this case, this is a San Francisco, uh, sorry, uh, California uh, state uh, stakeholders. So this is a California state and their counties uh, I live in Alameda County and San Francisco County, Santa Clara County, like that. And there are local government groups, like a workforce group and like an office of education group and food bank group, like a housing group. And uh, between the communities, there is a no, lots of like a service providers, uh, mainly nonprofit organizations and also for my uh, use case, it's a school district. So this is like a uh, stakeholder mapping. And my product, the target uh, use case is here. So I really spend my time to talk to these uh, stakeholders people. Then the, in, the, in the concept stage, I didn't have tangible solutions yet, but uh, talk to them, listen to them, try to understand the problems and uh, created a solution together. And we valued all stakeholders, challenges and goals through the workshop. And we came up with a common uh, hypothesis of the problems. 
So in each stakeholder, they have a different problems. For example, uh, so the problems, you know, uh, the goal is trying to deliver opportunities or social support to the necessary use so that they can uh, support every use and they can aim to uh, decrease the number of op opportunity use. But the reality is from the local government perspective, uh, resources are not utilized. And for the student use perspective, I don't know about the re available resources at all. So there's a huge gap between these. That's why there's a service provider, it's called a nonprofit organization. Uh, they talk to students directly and they explain what's available, what, how we can, uh, how the uh, resources help you. But the problem is the student uh, cannot apply for such uh, opportunities or resources because the document was uh, not collected, necessary document was not, you know, uh, cannot, they cannot collect the necessary documents from the youth. So that was the most common extreme problem that we defined together and everybody agreed on the table at the time. But still, this was a hypothesis. This is not the result. So we need to validate that. So the important thing is we agree on with customers to the same goal, same vision, and same problems definition, and let's solve it together. So we uh, quickly prototyped uh, a couple of version, and we had the opportunity to present uh, you know, solution to the all of the stakeholders uh, in like this. And uh, we got positive and negative feedback, but it's really worked to move on to the MVP stage. Let's create the, so customer really want these solutions. So MVP phase, uh, we uh, took some time to actually prototype the system. So I, will, I uh, need to find the engineering resources. I got tremendous support from our, our uh, internal organizations, from engineering resources and uh, designer resources, and also like uh, all of the necessary process to release as a software prototype to customers, uh, legal issue, uh, privacy concerns issue, and the software quality issues. So that was the benefit of the entrepreneur that you can get full support from your organization if you, your project is also authorized. Then we launched Opera. So in easy word, Opera is a secure resource pl sharing platform that helps organizations get the right opportunity to the right students. And we provide a tool for the education organization. And we provide a mobile application for use because we under, understood the all of the uh, available technologies for such use community is only mobile. So we need to design the mobile uh, application uh, solution for the use. But for managing all of the available opportunities and managing the like a secure uh, document transformation between use and organizations. So this is for the uh, desktop web-based application we developed for uh, teachers and uh, case managers. It's called a professional for to support such use communities. So the um, benefit of Opera, so this is uh, one of the pitch concept, uh, pitch uh, presentation. We always, our, our team always use it. So four benefits of Opera. So we help uh, educational organization to accelerate digital transformation. So originally they did a very manual process. Every teacher, every uh, case manager supports their students in their way. And they do not uh, uh, effectively share what's available opportunities and <clears throat> they take it they, they basically uh, use the tech communication to their students. 
where we help them to uh, manage all of the uh, available opportunity into one place and we help them to streamline their process to be able to focus on uh, youth engagement. And another benefit is the uh, uh, measure of impact. So previously it was like a very manual process. So it didn't uh, capture as a data, but we help them to manage all uh, available resources uh, into one space and share each opportunity with their use and they can see, they can track the number and they can see the impact of each opportunity. So it's really helped them to uh, think about uh, uh, data driven decision making rather than you know, rely on their personal experiences or guts. And these other uh, type of the like uh, social supports or resources. So you can think about uh, like a STEAM opportunity, like a job training, internship, career exploration, or that's the uh, educational resources, but not only for that. So their opportunities are struggling to live up with everyday life. So we help them to uh, manage essential uh, resources like uh, for the basic needs, uh, like the healthcare uh, resources or shelter program support and like, uh, free pro free food programs like this. So every available opportunity in the local region, you can access it on your uh, mobile application. So uh, that was a little bit of an introduction by pro uh, product overall, but the point is uh, MVP uh, feature priority often changes upon many reasons. So we need to, you know, sometimes we need to be flexible. And, and at the time we launched the COVID hit, so that, that also changed our priority because they need to change their way completely to support their uh, students and youth. Okay, so the concept stage, it's really starting from small, uh, a few uh, users or customers. So we were like a, a actually one, two organizations and the number of users was like a, a five, very small. And we improved and improved the experiences based on the feedback loop. We had a check-in uh, meeting every week with customers to keep relationship and get a uh, feedback loop. And we uh, try to improve the experience. In the beginning, it was super challenging because the uh, it's not going well. Uh, the customer or user uh, is not always happy about our prototypes. But uh, if we keep the relationship every week and we try to improve uh, based on that, and at some point they started to recommend uh, Opera to other organizations. So that's the kind of uh, the timing to scale for uh, other users and customers. And this year the pilot was ended, pilot ended almost one year. And the point is we kept uh, weekly check-in with customers and users to keep the feedback relations. We pivoted many times. It's not 100% happy. Uh, you know, they're still not perfect. We still need to improve. But we learned many times and uh, we are now moving to the uh, next phase. Still challenge ongoing. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, our uh, opera vision is to create a past opportunity that unlock the potential of every youth. So that was the uh, introduction of my opera. And I want to explain about the present talk, but actually this is uh, not targeting a social problem. So uh, maybe in the next uh, opportunity if I get, 
I'm happy to uh, introduce more detail. But the stage is still uh, MVP stage. We are not uh, moving to uh, the next phase stage, but this is the current status and still uh, on challenges. Okay. Uh, so I wanna, in my experiences, so these are the required skills as a social entrepreneur. Uh, one, visioning to develop a shared vision of the future and influence others to work together for the same goals. And uh, to the second, execution. So it's continuous execution is the key and perceive till the end. It's never ending though. <laughs> and the uh, uh, network, uh, dive into different fields, you know, uh, escape from your comfort zone and uh, connect dots of talents for creating shared value. And lastly, I really believe uh, residence is important, being able to adapt well and bounce back quickly in times of stress. Let me, uh, I'll, I really <laughs> think that residence is also important, all important. I'm not saying I have all, I'm tr still trying to improve myself, but uh, residence is, I think, one of the key because the entrepreneur, entrepreneur uh, journey is always uh, exciting, but it's always challenging. You know, and this is kind of typical uh, emotion grow or like every day or every week. <laughs> this is like a job of sorrow. It's called the job of sorrow. You initially you believe, you strongly believe your idea is gonna work. It's gonna all, it's gonna make change uh, better, uh, change the world, and right. But if you you know test it, uh, it doesn't work. Oh fail! What have I done? At least I can't get any worse. Then you pivot it and you test it again. It get worse more. <laughs> this is often happened, and the pivot, pivot and cycle iteration, and maybe finally, then not, then maybe uh, these other, you know, uh, happy days here again, when you successfully make it happen, if your customer's happy about that. <clears throat> but this, you know, uh, it sounds like a super stressful <laughs> journey, but the point is this is you know, every week you're learning new things every week. So you it's dif differently improving your uh, skill set and experiences. And if you think about the whole journey as a uh, entrepreneur, it's just a small thing here. This cycle is just a, a, one of the small moment here and it continuously happen. And if you see, if you see in the long run, you see it's all climbing your uh, you know, mountain to achieve your vision. And if you stop sometimes and look back, you see, oh, how much I've done. So this is a huge improvement from like a month ago or even like a year ago. So that's the most important uh, you know, part of the entrepreneur. Okay, so uh, this is <laughs> this is for uh, entrepreneur, not for entrepreneur. It's usually in a larger organization. This is a little bit famous chart. It's called the idea care of chart. If you have ideas, most likely uh, many people don't agree with your ideas, and you will feel. <laughs> you're trying to, you know, pitch your idea to different organizations, your different managers, but you get uh, lots of feedback. Sometimes you get stressed out and sometimes you feel your organization is like this. <laughs> but uh, don't look at your organization like this chart. Maybe, uh, you know, an uh, important thing is 99% uh, if your idea is not convinced it's your uh, uh, problem. So it's not well prepared. If I'm not able to convince my product to uh, others, that's my problem. It's not the organization's problem. 
the important thing is make your organizations, uh, like the managers or friends, be on your side to run the supporting ecosystem in your organization. That's the uh, point. And uh, lots of the feedback I received uh, from the audiences, you know, the one of the feedback is how you keep motivated through this journey. <laughs> so there are two things. Uh, one is keep trust relationship with your customers. So that's why the stage one is always starting from your customer, not starting from, from your uh, internal teams or internal uh, your ideas. Start from your customers and define problems, then commit with your customer to solve the problem. So if you commit, the, um, you know, uh, com if you make a commitment with your customer, so that will keep you motivated because the customer is waiting for your uh, solution product and uh, trust your team. You work with your team. So that's the best part that you can enjoy through this journey. All right, so that's my uh, story. I uh, hope this session was something meaningful for you. You know, the uh, truth is uh, there are so many unmet social problems in the world and people are suffering from the problems, looking for solutions. You know, uh, my final message is you can enjoy your whole life without seeing the, such social problems, but life is one chance. And if you think you want to invest your life to something meaningful to your society, my message is why don't we become a social entrepreneur? So becoming a social entrepreneur is not a goal, it's about the uh, process to create shared value. So if you take action from like, uh, you know, today or tomorrow, I will promise your uh, everyday life will be exciting and uh, rewarding. That's it, thank you so much. And uh, just uh, one, maybe one, two minutes. This is just a recommended books based on my, uh, my I read and it was super insightful and I learned so many things. So uh, just I recommend books as an entrepreneur. And I also got some, a lot of feedback about, oh, I don't know how to create, how to create an idea, where to start. So I would recommend putting yourself into a different environment, uh, like talking to people who really needs help or uh, join a volunteer activity in a local community or join a civic tech community or even like a taking an entrepreneurship course at school. <laughs> this is all I, I'm doing that now, but uh, this change, this, this actually changed my mind a lot and it really helped to uh, keep me going. So, and lots of uh, other creative ideas I get. So I, re I really recommend that instead of just uh, talking to internally and you know working inside the office, go outside of the office, and talk to different people is the, I think it's pretty efficient. Thank you so much. Maybe I'll hand it over back to you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for your um, very nice, interesting and, and uh, yeah, meaningful presentation today. Um, yeah, um, maybe um, could you please like let me share my um, last slides. Yes, thank you. Okay. Yeah. Um, So, uh, thank you everyone again, and uh, thank you uh, Yushi-san uh, for his nice presentation, and thank you everyone for the participating. And uh, um, so uh, we will have Q and session after this presentation, but uh, uh, this Q and session won't happen in the current uh, lecture venue. 
Um, if anyone interested in uh, have uh, additional chat with uh, um, Yushisa, uh, please go to open space, um, uh, open space uh, pod after you uh, left the current um, current space. Yeah, if you have any uh, question, yeah, please go there and uh, yeah, enjoy your private chat time with uh, Yushisa. Yeah, thank you, everyone.